Happy Little Games. Penguins sure are cute. These toothless, flightless little creatures can be found way down in the southern hemisphere, usually in Antarctica or, quite possibly, wherever Batman has been spotted. It's no wonder that game designers would gravitate towards such unique creatures that are so adorable they could bring a tear to a glass eye. In the early 1980s, Sega introduced the world to one of its earliest mascots that would go on to appear in a number of games and become the gold standard for all fine feathered friends everywhere. No, I'm not talking about Pingu. I'm talking about the star of Sega's 1982 arcade hit Pingu. Why were there two versions of the arcade game released? What fighting game did Pingo almost appear in? Let's find out as we learn about the history of Pingo. Not much is known about the development of Pingo. As I've mentioned in previous videos, Japanese developers were not allowed credit for any of the games they developed for fear of poaching from other companies. This prompted game designers to hide their initials in their own games, which resulted in the very first Easter egg with Atari's Adventure Game. Thanks to a hidden credit screen, we do know the game was directed by Nobuo Kodera, programmed by Akira Nakakuma, and designed by Shinji Eiji. This was at a time when Sega used a lot of subcontractors hiring the company Coreland in the process. The company would bring us a number of arcade titles for Sega, including SWAT, Forty Warriors, and My Hero. Since any and all concepts were pretty much up for grabs at the time, all it took was one little idea to potentially create a game. How about a frog crosses the road and hops onto a lily pad? How about a golden glove winning kangaroo defends her joey? A nymphomaniac gorilla kidnaps a girl and climbs a skyscraper. Perhaps this is what happened with Pingo. To my knowledge, the director has never given any interviews as to where the idea came from. One thing is for certain though was that this was one of Sega's first arcade hits. Pengo was released in 1982 by Sega. You take control of Pengo, a red feathered penguin as he sets out to defeat every enemy on the map who are the villainous blobs known as Snowbees. Each level is made up of blocks of ice, which is essentially a maze. The difference between this game and Pac-Man is that you have to rearrange the maze by kicking the blocks. The blocks can be kicked in one of four directions, provided there is space for the blocks to actually move. After kicking one, they will slide along, smashing into obstacles, taking out anything in its path, and that includes the Snowbees. The Snowbees are the big bad of the game and will do anything to send you to Penguin Heaven. You need to smash the Snowbees with the sliding blocks all while trying to keep your beak nice and cool. It is possible to take out multiple Snowbees by using one block of ice for increased points. If a block is trapped against something else when you kick it, it will shatter. There are two types of Snowbees. A normal type which wanders around the stage taking in all the sights and sounds, and there's also a more aggressive type which can destroy ice blocks which almost always happens at the most inopportune times. At the start of each stage, certain blocks are highlighted which contain snow bee eggs which will hatch underneath. As you destroy more snow bees, the eggs will hatch to replace them. Something else to aid you in your quest is the ability to temporarily stun the snow bees. If you kick against the outer walls while the snow bee is touching it, you can crush them with a block or run over them to destroy them. 
You have to be quick though because they are only stunned temporarily. There are three blocks with diamonds in the middle that cannot be crushed. If you rearrange these in a continuous horizontal or vertical line, you are awarded 10,000 points. This will also temporarily stun every active snow bee. When it comes to taking care of the snow bees, you have to be quick because the longer you take, the faster they become and the lower the bonus points you will receive for clearing the level. When you reach the last snow bee to be killed, it will try to escape by running off to one of the corners. After every second round, a different short intermission is played similar to the ones found in Pac-Man. This game does feature six different intermissions. There are 16 rounds or acts in total at which point the levels repeat only at a higher difficulty. The music is catchy playing a version of the 1969 song Popcorn by Gershon Kingsley. This was only licensed for use in Japan, although some import and bootleg copies did make it to the U.S. because I can distinctly recall hearing this version. <laughs> Beethoven's Symphony No. 9 Third Movement is also used on the intermission screens. The initial version of Featured Popcorn also had a slower startup screen when plotting out the ice blocks for each stage. The later revisions, which changed the music, sped up the plotting process. Pengo was available in a couple of different licensed handheld games, both from Bandai Electronics. The first one is an LCD pocket game, and the second one being a VFD tabletop version. The game initially appeared only on Atari consoles in the early 1980s. This means that if you played it on anything other than an actual Atari computer back in the day, you were playing a clone and there were a ton of them at the time. A lot of these clones were pretty blatant choosing to outright copy it directly as opposed to making small changes such as Pengo for the Commodore 64 which was released in 1983 and was unlicensed. Aside from the speed being just a little bit slower, it is fantastic and even includes the cutscenes from the arcade original. Another fantastic homebrew to check out is the Atari 7800 version which came to us just last year by Daryl Ginther. This is a mixture of the arcade version and Atari 5200 port which the author did to make the most balanced conversion. This has a number of new features including a difficulty level, 12 different intermissions, the arcade intro, popcorn and more. He also brought us the fantastic version of Popeye for the Atari 7800. First up is the trusty but perhaps rusty Atari 2600 version. This actually does a pretty good job at replicating the gameplay from the arcade game on the humble 2600 architecture. The first thing you notice is the smaller playfield which doesn't give you a whole lot of room to maneuver. The speed is also quite a bit slower which turns down the tension all throughout. Also included are the diamond blocks as well as the ability to kick the sides of the playfield. 
The intermissions did not make it over, which is par for the course for all the officially licensed versions from Atari. We are treated to about five seconds of in-game music, and my friends, that's as close to a queef as we are going to get today. Because it's so short, perhaps it should be called a quiff. The Atari 5200 version uses the same smaller playfield as the 2600 version but with obviously amped up graphics and sounds. Speaking of the sounds, Popcorn did not make it over although there is still a catchy jingle playing in the background. The gameplay is once again a bit on the slow side but it's definitely playable and I'm sure it was a treat to play back in 1983 at home. Everything from the arcade game has been pulled over, including the diamond blocks and the vibrating walls. Using an Xbox 360 pad, the game controls great, but I've heard it was a bit of a nightmare using the original 5200 controllers. The Atari 8-bit versions look pretty much identical from what I've seen. Sega's Game Gear received its own version in 1990. This is a straight up port of the arcade game but it does make some changes to the graphics. In order to fit in the entire playfield without scrolling, the game uses small block graphics with larger sprites for Pingo and the Snowbees. This works surprisingly well with the gameplay speed right on par with the arcade game. The Japanese version even includes popcorn along with a second tune as well. The Western versions only have the new song and popcorn is omitted. It's a fantastic version if you want a little bit of Pingo on the road. Papinga Pingo, or sometimes simply known as Pingo, was released for the Mega Drive in 1995. This is a sequel to the original arcade game which plays similar to the original Bomberman, which makes sense because Bomberman was apparently influenced by Pingo. There were some changes to the gameplay as Pingo can no longer smash ice blocks. You can, however, kick other blocks into them, which will destroy them. You also have power-ups similar to Bomberman, such as increased speed. There is even a battle mode in which you can take on three other players. The original arcade game has also been included, which is a very good port, but the screen does have to scroll. Just a little bit of trivia. The original box has Sonic the Hedgehog hidden in the background with a waddle of penguins. The best home version to come along was for the Sega Saturn, which is found on Sega Memorial Collection Volume 1, which is a compilation of other Sega classic arcade hits. The graphics and sounds are very close to the arcade game and it is a port and not running under emulation. It controls great and it even includes popcorn, which always gets my blood pumping. The 
game appeared in Japanese arcades as part of a compilation for the Sega Ring Edge 2. It also appeared in the Japanese Xbox 360 compilation along with three other games, Action Skill Test, Shooting Skill Test, and Combat Zeal. The 360 version of Pingo featured four player simultaneous action in which players have to compete for the highest score, but they are also able to kill each other. The gameplay remains pretty much the same. It was a mini-game in the Japanese title Sega Gaga in which you have to load trucks by taking the boxes onto the platform. We even get a version of popcorn playing in the background. Pengo made a number of cameos over the years including Sega's Championship Boxing, Teddy Boy Blues, and was even slated to make his first 3D appearance in Sonic the Fighters but he was cut from production for some reason. Thanks to the Cutting Room Floor website, the model exists for your viewing pleasure. Pengo was one of my earliest memories when it comes to arcade games I used to play on Friday nights at the bowling alley. It wasn't a huge commercial success here in the States, but I've always enjoyed it, although it can get repetitive on the latter stages. If you've never had a chance to slide around the ice while squishing some snow bees in the process, be sure and give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you could always use the donate button up above. Thanks everybody for watching.